Minecraft, the legend. It's been 10 years since its official release, and despite being a deceptively simple game made by a handful of people in Sweden, it has gone on to become the best-selling video game in history. This enigmatic sandbox behemoth has touched the lives of hundreds of millions of players across the globe since exploding in popularity, including yours truly. My life has definitely been impacted by it, and I bet it has for you too. It wouldn't be a stretch to call this the game that defined a decade. And yet, before this becomes one out of countless Minecraft themed videos on this stinking website, I have to set an expectation with you up front. The thoughts and commentary you're about to listen to come from the perspective of someone who no longer plays Minecraft on a regular basis. That has nothing to do with any particular distaste with the game or something similar. Far from it. This has been and always will be one of my favorite video games, hence the thumbnail. I mean, for goodness sake, I made this birthday cake for myself a few years ago. Minecraft honestly is as perfect as a game can get, and for reasons you're probably already aware of, so I won't focus on that. Rather, with the game reaching its 10th anniversary, I just wanted to briefly share my Minecraft story and why I believe the game holds a ton of value even to this day. But as for why I no longer regularly play it, that's simply for the matter of me not wanting to use up more time on it, for it's an addictive time sink. The game enables boundless creativity through its wealth of options, on top of each procedurally generated world, offering up their own unique secrets and adventures when whenever you create a new save file. With my schedule being the way it is, having to balance a full-time job, obligations to family, and other adult responsibilities, I don't really have as much time to invest myself in a work of entertainment like this, unless it's something with a defined ending and I haven't experienced it before. Minecraft isn't exactly like that. Sure, you can fight the Ender Dragon and technically complete the game, but that's not really the point of Minecraft, is it? When you genuinely play Minecraft as intended, there's no clear end in sight. You just keep digging, crafting, building, and go with whatever your gut tells you. That's simply not the kind of game I want to play nowadays. Despite my enjoyment of multiplayer titles like Halo and Smash Bros, I prefer games with a clear goal to strive for. But Minecraft still holds a soft spot in my nostalgic gamer heart for the role it played in my life years ago. When I saw footage of the game in its beta stage and eventually at its full release in November 2011, it looked intriguing, but not enough to take the plunge. I mean, part of that had to do with the fact that it didn't really play games on PC, aside from the dinosaur Dell laptop I used that could only run games like StarCraft and Roller Coaster Tycoon. So, I wasn't exactly an early adopter of Minecraft. But then we fast forward to May 2012. My buddy Justin, who you've probably seen in previous videos of mine, invited me to play Minecraft at his grandparents' house. He owned an Xbox 360 just like me, and had purchased the Xbox Live Arcade version that had just come out at the time. The rest is history. The two of us, along with some of his brothers, played the game for like five to six hours straight via split screen. And we weren't even doing anything that monumental. Most of what we did just amounted to digging up endless tunnels of stone to find rare materials. But you know what? It was fun. Like, ridiculously fun. The gameplay might have been mundane, but we enjoyed ourselves immensely anyway, for the relaxing and laid-back gameplay loop allowed us to work at our own pace, while we also had time to just talk while we played. Plenty of games are social experiences, but Minecraft is unique in that you don't have to constantly do something competitive or fast-paced to keep up. You get only what you want to get out of it, meaning that you can go at such a pace that you can just let the game be a vessel for your social interactions. And thus it was. For my senior year of high school and the summer Summer leading up to it, exploring a world one of us had generated from Minecraft became a regular pastime for local multiplayer. But in a way, it was also a means by which we steadily came of age. On one particular night, just before graduating high school, my aforementioned buddy Justin, as well as my other pal Jared, shared another night of playing Minecraft with me for several straight hours, exploring, questing, and building as we pleased. The gameplay was fun, yet it was also a night in which the three of us just reminisced and pondered upon the future. Life post graduation weighed quite powerfully on our minds, what with us all leaving for two year long missions for our church in the foreseeable future. It was nice to sit with them and talk down to earth about our thoughts for what was to come. The warm vibe given off by Minecraft's atmosphere and charming blocky world allowed us the chance for escapism amidst some rather heavy discussion. Since then, the three of us have continued to foster our friendship well into adulthood since we're all now in our mid to late 20s. But we look back on that evening fondly, having named
aimed at nostalgia night since then. Even though it might have been one of those you kinda had to be there sort of things, I would hope you know what I'm getting at here. After all, I brought that whole story up because Minecraft has that innate power, if perhaps unintentionally, of bringing people together. For instance, a few years later, I got married to my high school sweetheart. My wife and in-laws love video games, so naturally, I just had to introduce them to Minecraft. So I did. I gifted them a copy of the PS4 version back in late 2015 or early 2016, I can't exactly remember when. But in the several years since then, we've spent many weekends exploring and building structures. In many ways, they have all outdone what I have the patience and creative capacity to build. My father and younger brother-in-law in particular have worked together over countless hours digging elaborate networks of Minecraft rails, making ingenious engineering experiments with redstone, building complex structures, and so on and so forth. The game gave them an outlet by which they can let their minds run free and forget the world around them for a little while. Moreover, we've all bonded as a family talking about what we were creating as those very things were being built, oftentimes individually, but then other times as tag teams. That's what I ultimately want to celebrate for Minecraft's 10th anniversary. You all know how great it is as a video game, that its dynamic gameplay loop and diverse mechanics make for an experience that never stagnates, regardless if you're playing on survival survival or creative mode. But what I hope people don't ever forget or undervalue is that Minecraft is a means by which you can forge lifelong friendships and foster strong connections with your family. It's fun, yes, but more importantly, it's a vessel by which you can share what's on your mind as you create and then naturally open up to more personal moments with those you care about. There are very few video games out there that are just nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, there are a lot of titles out there that are about friendly competition, but nothing quite compares to the calmness and serenity of Minecraft. The aura emanating from its inviting world, soothing music, and addictive gameplay completely fits the bill that entertainment should strive for, which is escaping. And it's even better when you can share in that fantasy with those you care about. So even though I don't play it that much these days, that's a big reason, among many others, why Minecraft is still one of my favorite games. And that's it! Thank you for taking this brief opportunity to hear me talk about this little indie game gem that nobody has ever talked about on YouTube before. If you liked what you saw and would be interested in seeing more of what I have to offer, please consider subscribing to the channel and joining the notification squadron so that you don't miss out on my future videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great one.